Number 1. Tornado Drill Easily the most frightening experience I ever had was back when I was in the fifth grade. I remember everything about it, actually. I was walking to school, and it was unusually dark outside. The sky was completely overcast, with the darkest clouds that I'd ever seen in my life. I had my umbrella with me, just in case it was going to rain, but I made it to school before that happened. I have to admit to being very distracted that day. I spent most of the time looking out the window. The teacher had to call my name to get my attention on more than one occasion. I couldn't help it, though. There was something very different about the way the approaching storm seemed, something that I had never really noticed in another storm. I just really wasn't sure what that was. It began raining pretty hard, about a half hour before lunch. The dark sky was lit up several times by strikes of lightning, and the cracks of thunder drowned out my teacher's voice. I was quite mesmerized by what was happening. I'll always remember this part quite vividly. The bell that signified it was time for lunch sounded. My teacher got up and told us to line up at the door. No sooner had I gotten up from my desk than I heard the drill alarm go off or at least what I thought was the drill alarm. Immediately, all the kids in the line began to panic. I think we all assumed there was a fire, but I guess that didn't make much sense, since the rain was falling so hard. The principal's voice then came over the intercom. He informed us that this was not a drill, and there wasn't a fire. A tornado warning had been sounded. We were instructed to go out into the hallway, just as we did when we had tornado drills. Unfortunately, the words of the principal didn't do anything to calm us down. Kids were pushing each other out of the way. Everyone was in a hurry to be the first out of the classroom and into the hallway. It was pretty bad. The teacher was trying to get everyone to calm down. It didn't work. And from the sound of what was happening, it wasn't working in the other classrooms either. So, this is what I remember happening. I tried pushing through the other kids as well. When I got out into the hallway, it was utter chaos. Kids were running around, some were up against the wall, in that tornado drill stance. You know, sitting down, putting their head down in their lap, and putting their arms over their heads. But unlike the drills, it wasn't orderly at all. Kids were taking up more space than they needed to, and there really wasn't enough room for everyone. I didn't want to create a problem myself, so I just found my spot on the wall, dug down, and put my head down. I'm not sure how long I sat there like that before it happened. It was loud. Kids were carrying on. The damn tornado alarm was still going off. And then a new sound joined them. It was a very loud sound, almost like being on a train. I was on the verge of tears because I just knew that it had to be the tornado that I was hearing. Well, the sound only got louder and louder. I also had this overpowering urge to look up. I knew I wasn't supposed to, and I was trying to follow the rules. But after a while, it was just too much to resist. I lifted my head up and looked. Right when I did, I heard the most horrible crashing sound. And that's not even how I can describe it. I'm not sure there are words to describe it. But the side of the school got torn right open before my eyes. I didn't see a funnel or anything, but I knew that the tornado had just hit the school just down the hallway from me. And terrified, I wasn't sure what to do. For some reason, I thought if I put my head back down and covered it, I would be all right. I mean, if adults tell you this is the way to protect yourself, it must be right, I figured. So I did. And it was horrible, listening to the noises of the tornado, hearing children screaming, and hearing the school being ripped apart. And throughout all of it, 
I did my best to keep my head down so I wouldn't get hurt by the tornado. I don't know how long I was down like that. It seemed like forever. Eventually, though, the noise died down. The tornado was gone. I still waited until a teacher tapped on my shoulder to get up, though. The area where the tornado hit the school was absolutely demolished. If you've never been in a tornado before, I know a lot of people have said they really want to see one. But I don't think you do. Number 2. Water Spout I had been planning on going on this fishing trip for quite a while. When I got up in the morning, I had everything packed and put into my truck. My boat was secured, and I set out before the sun came up. Although I had checked the weather before I went to bed, and when I got up, I was a bit surprised when the sun did rise. It was supposed to be overcast and rainy, and it was. But what surprised me were how dark the clouds were. I tried not to let it get me down, though. When you really want to go fishing, rain is one of the last things that will stop you from doing so. I was out on the lake on my boat, and the sky was still pretty dark. I had gotten to the lake and out of my boat before any rain fell. However, when it did begin raining, it rained really hard. I remember getting hit by the drops of rain, and I felt like the rain was attacking me. I found it unpleasant, but it really wasn't enough to get me to come off the water. However, when the sky was positively lit up by the scariest lightning I had ever seen in my life, I decided it would be best if my fishing trip was put to an end. I started the motor and decided to head for land. The lake wasn't that big, so it wouldn't take me very long to get to the shore. Getting my boat out of the water in that weather, though, that was not going to be fun. What caught my attention then was the strangest sound I'd ever heard. It sounded like a loud and wet crash. Uh, that might not be the best way to describe it, but it's the only thing I can think of at the moment. It was loud and scary, though. I turned around and was absolutely shocked at what I saw in the distance. A tall and thin tornado had touched down on the surface of the lake. I panicked. I mean, I think anybody would. You always like to think you'd be calm and act rationally when these things happen, but no, I definitely didn't. Hell, I almost wanted to jump out of my boat and swim to the shore. Of course, that would have been stupid. My boat was much faster than I was, but it was the way that I felt. I just kept heading for shore, but I couldn't take my eyes off the water spout. Every time I looked forward, it was only for a second before I looked back. And yeah, it was coming in my direction. As I said, it wasn't a big lake, so the spout didn't have a variety of places that it could go. When I finally got to shore, the tornado had made some serious ground on me. I couldn't risk trying to dock my boat. I just got close enough to the shore that I could jump out of it and onto the dock. I then ran as fast as I could to my truck and jumped in. As I was starting the truck up, I saw the scariest thing I'd ever seen. The water spout picked my boat up out of the water as if it were nothing, and the boat was thrown straight up in the air before it came crashing down only a few yards from my truck. I put the truck in gear and took off. Fortunately for me, the tornado didn't come after me. Number 3. The New Home I have a recurring dream. Well, it's more of a recurring concept dream. The dream itself is not the same, but what happens in it is the same. I'll be somewhere with any person. It's usually a different person each time. It will be really cloudy outside. I'll look off in the distance. I'll see a tornado touch down. I'll panic. And this is the funny part. Each time I see the tornado, 
I'll remember that I have a recurring dream about tornadoes. I'll tell myself, this time it's not a dream, and I'll run off to try and find a basement to hide in. I've been having this dream over and over my whole life. And I think the thing that makes this story so weird is that it happened in December. It was December 21st, 2013 to be precise. I was moving into a house with my sister as a roommate. This takes place in Tennessee. On the day of the move, we were pretty upset that it was going to be a rainy day. So we tried to get all of our loading done before it began to rain. We were actually pretty fortunate that we were able to get everything done with no more than a sprinkling of rain hitting us. We were only about an hour and twenty minutes from the place we were moving to, so it was a pretty quick job. Plus, it was unusually warm that day, so it wasn't really an unpleasant experience. Probably about five o'clock in the evening, we were in our house with our pets. My sister has four cats and a dog, and I had a ferret. We were sorting through things when my cell phone began making a noise I was unfamiliar with. I picked up the phone and when I looked at it, I was shocked that it was a tornado warning. I wasn't really too concerned, however. Although I've never had one on my phone, I have had tornado warnings before. I've never actually seen a tornado, though. I guess the reason it shocked me was that it was odd to get a tornado warning in December. We went ahead and gathered the pets into the living room with us. We had a basement, but you had to go outside and around to the backyard to get into it. I had the key ready in case I had to do this. It then began raining really hard. I mean, really hard. My cell phone then made the warning noise again, and I looked at it. It told us to immediately take shelter. There were several loud cracks of thunder. It was then that the weirdest thing happened. Almost immediately, the rain stopped. There was no thunder, and it was eerily quiet. I was familiar with that calm before the storm thing with regards to tornadoes, but when it actually happened, it was just very, very strange and unnerving. We were about to gather the pets up and head down to the basement when the silence was broken by an almost immediate and deafening crashing sound. And then there was a sound that I can only describe as a train on steroids. It was very, very loud. And then the thunder struck again. We decided not to go in the basement at this point, because we were concerned that the tornado might be right outside. The electricity then went out. Just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, the house began shaking. The pets were all scared, and we really didn't know what to do. I went over and looked out the window, scared but still curious to see if there really was a tornado out there. I didn't see it, and I really couldn't see anything. It was too dark, and the electricity was out everywhere. So I just sat back in the house with the pets. The noise just got louder and louder, and the house was shaking. I was pretty terrified, and began to wonder if we should try going to the basement. It was then... Very suddenly, the noise stopped. The house stopped shaking. Almost immediately, the lights came back on. It was over as quickly and abruptly as it had begun. The whole experience was just really odd. The next morning, I didn't see that any of the houses were damaged. A tree was knocked over the street, but that was the only sign that something happened. I don't know. I just hope it doesn't happen again. I tell you, it would have been strange that the very day we moved into that house that it'd be hit by a tornado. That would be really, really bad luck. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. Please feel free to leave comments and share this video with someone you might think will enjoy it. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, hit the subscribe button either below or the one that will appear at the end of the video. If you have a story that you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, 
please email it to the address included in the description. I hope everyone who celebrated Thanksgiving had a good holiday. If you didn't celebrate it or you don't, I hope you had a great Thursday. And like then, I hope you'll remember to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.